You know, New York Rangers' legacy of goalies is well known. You've had some great ones. You've had some young ones. You've had some bad ones. But I've never think the Rangers have had a goalie since this guy. Uh, it's been, <clears throat> geez, almost 80 years <clears throat> since this guy first put on the pads for the Rangers in a very... Uh, in need wartime season for the blue and white but when steve bazinski took the ice something interesting you know is going to happen and he's part of so much history in nhl lore that even i as a researcher as a sports editor still cannot believe he was part of it now he gave up morris richard's first nhl goal he was part of the last overtime game in NHL history for 40 years. And he gave up seven points, which was then an NHL record, for points by a player in a game. Carl Liskom uh, with seven. Now, Steve Brzezinski, I would figure he's the most important player for the NHL ever come to, from Dunblane in Saskatchewan. If, if you can correct me, I'm glad to do it. For the 75 years he's on this planet, he made such an impact as a coach, as a, as a legend, as a link to the Ranger teams in the 1940s. Now, he played uh, pro hockey for a number of years, <coughs> mostly in senior hockey and minor pro, but he played with the Rangers briefly in 1942. Now, like I said, born in Dunblane, he, Brzezinski was brought to Swift Current, Saskatchewan in 1938, beautiful community, to play goal for the Senior League Swift Current Indians, where he competed for Allen Cup berths in the 1940s. Now, they won the Western Canadian Senior title in 40 and 41, after making it to the regional finals in 42. Now, ravaged by wartime enlistments, now, the Rangers, as a lot of people know, played a lot of uh, non nhlers during the 43 season. They fielded two 70-year-olds at year at various points, along with several other teenagers and minor leaguers. New York lost its starting goaltender from the previous season because of the enlistment of regular goalie, uh, the aptly named Sugar Jim Henry, to replace him. Rangers manager Lester Patrick hoped to attain the services of minor leaguer Omer Kelly, but he was fixed in a wartime manufacturing job in Baltimore, of all places. Bazinski was invited to try out for the team in training camp and did well enough to be named a starter going in the regular season. Now, at 5'8", 140, according to published reports, he didn't seem 5'8", he seemed 5'2", to 5'4". If you look at a lot of books written in the late 60s or the 70s that are recalled a lot of the, uh, the New York era of that time, and I think some of them were written by Stan Fischler, who was known to embellish, uh, uh, referred to him many, many times. Now, uh, behind a notably weak Rangers lineup, which had only Ott Heller from his previous lineup on defense, and which spent most of the season in the last place, Bazinski fared poorly, allowing, get this, 55 goals in his nine games as the team's number one goalie. He provoked several colorful anecdotes, among which was in making his first save in a game to the glove side and telling Heller out loud, out loud, nothing like it ought, just like picking apples off a tree. Well, this tree fell apart later on. He surrendered 10 goals in that contest. Now, <laughs> while his worst record came to season's first four games, in which he allowed 33 goals, including a 10-4 loss in the Habs on November 8th. That was, of course, notable by Maurice Richard's first, first NHL goal. He also had a 12-5 law, loss to Detroit, in which Linscombe set the then NHL record for points in the game with seven. Of course, it was later on the Olmstead and uh, Richard numbers. Now, uh, after an 8-6 loss to the Maple Leafs on November 28, Rangers management had had enough. Replaced with Jimmy Franks, Bozinski was demoted to the Rangers AHL New Haven Eagles farm team on December 3rd to practice with the club, which coach Frank Boucher is saying, if you think enough of them, you will get a chance to show what he can do in a regular game. Bozinski, of course, subsequently enlisted, which was common practice at the time. He never played another pro game, and after a war, returned to the Swift Current Indian senior team, where he played until retiring from organized hockey in 1953. Now, there were some rumors that some of the senior hockey teams out there was paid, or like per diems, not for me to say, but were still not considered 
pro pro hockey, but if I've covered senior hockey for a lot of years, do I cover certain expenses? Well, that's not the point. Now, according to statistics, he played for 17 years. Now, uh, he passed away in Swift Current on February 20th, 1992, but the obituary doesn't, didn't just talk about his hockey uh, uh, stats, but we'll go over a little bit. Bozinski finished his NHL career with a record of 2-6-1 with a 6.10 goals against average. His second and final win, a 5-3 victory over the Blackhawks on November 10th, was noteworthy in that it was the last regular season overtime game played for over 40 years. League President Frank Collar eliminated, uh, eliminated them 11 days later as part of wartime cutbacks, again to were restored in 1983. Now, in civilian life, Bozinski worked at this for 41 years as a plant breeder for Agriculture Canada during and after his hockey career, as well as coaching hockey at the intermediate level. The nickname the Puck Bozinski is associated with Bozinski, but there are no con contemporary, contemporary uses of the moniker, which again appears to be, have been invented by a hockey writer and historian Stan Fischler sometime in the 1970s. Bozinski's own comment on the origin of the nickname was, I have no idea at all. A lot of this is a figment of someone's imagination. Now, the, uh, the idea of Bozinski uh, not making it in the NHL past that 42-43 season, he had talent. But the thing is, at the time, ladies and gentlemen, if you're only playing seven players and 13 or 10 players or over in wartime, especially the Rangers. They had no depth system. Montreal had depth. But how do you win two games? Well, again, the overtime win, I think it would have worked if they were tied, you were doing overtime period, and whatever the score was at the end, there was no sudden debt. But, again, two, six, and one, nine games, and we're still talking about them all these years later. So, again, the family and friends, the, uh, the the followers of Steve Buzinski, all I can say, he's a big part of hockey history. He wasn't the worst goalie in NHL history, far, uh, far from it. Maybe he played uh, in that for one of the worst Ranger teams of the 1940s, but his, his wartime, there's not that much to do. You still have to play. Look at the Montreal Canadiens this year. they got tons of injuries. No carry price. They're losing every night, but that's all they got. they got to play. You can't just take the season off or call up the the whole team from Laval, which I think Montreal should do, but that's not the point. So if you're a New York Rangers fan, if you're first time hearing about Steve Bozinski, I want you to research some of the fish are writing about him, and like I said, most of the legends are true. But I'm going to tell you a little bit like of Dun Blaine, where he come from, okay? Because I think he needs, uh, he needs a little bit of background. Now, the town was on the Canadian National Railway Conquest Subdivision. Rail service there first arrived in 1914, and the town prospered to a population of over 300 until the construction of oil pipelines made rail transport less viable for the transportation of Turner Valley crude oil. By 1980, there was little left of the original town site. So in 2022, it's a ghost town. Okay? But... Steve Bozinski put it on the map, and Steve Bozinski, it's 42 years that's even been a Dunblane in Saskatchewan. But when I was a kid, I heard stories of Dunblane saying that it was a key CNR uh, subdivision, because some of my family worked in the C for CN Rail. Big respect for that community, because Saskatchewan has always been... Uh, what do you call uh, the the train system really built that area and to know that someone from like Steve Bozinski comes from a community that was so prosperous that no longer exists thus the legend continues so uh, ladies and gentlemen if you like what we're doing here with our uh, uh, podcast on the history of the NHL special New York Rangers the blue and white are very popular on my channel let me know what to like comment subscribe and by the way if you're taking time tonight uh, just remember the Olympic tournament will be very interesting this year for the men and the women. I know the women's side were really looking forward to this. I wish great luck to all the teams participating from across the world. And, you know, some people don't agree with China, but I agree in having an Olympic tournament. And I think everybody should, wa should watch the great talent of all the countries in the world, including China and celebrate our great game of hockey. Steve Buzinski is looking down and saying, I loved hockey and coaching and playing for that many years. Think of the great people that came before that couldn't play at the Olympics. 
And I think they're pleased that people can, can skate there. Thanks for listening. Bye.